So we got Joshua Boatsy fighting Dan Aziz this weekend in a WBA final eliminator to become mandatory challenger for Dimitri Bivol's light heavyweight title. Now in professional boxing, there are lots of alpha males, people with big egos, and they are engaging each other in physical combat. So inevitably, there are going to be a lot of genuine real beefs between fighters. But professional boxing is also a business and beef sells. So just as inevitably, there are going to be fake beefs which have been concocted in order to drive ticket sales, pay-per-views, and so on. And the stuff I've seen in the run-up to this rescheduled Joshua Boatsy Danazi's fight, in my view, fits into the second category. I don't buy this beef between these two guys. When the first original fight date was pushed back, I don't remember any beef between the two of them in the run-up to that. And there were a lot of fans who were skeptical about the reason given for the fight being pushed back. They reckon it was because of slow ticket sales. And so when they rescheduled a fight, these two guys who are not known for trash talk, who appear to be quite friendly and whatever with each other, all of a sudden when they rescheduled a the fight, they're going back and forth and there's beef between Boatsy and Aziz and they're trash talking each other on Sky News and all this type of stuff. Yeah, it seems a bit contrived to me. Anyway, even if they're best friends, and I'm not saying they are best friends, but even if they were, hypothetically, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't be WW3 in the ring. You know, sometimes guys who actually are friendly with each other, like each other even, can still put on a vicious spectacle when they step through the ropes into that squared circle. They don't pull their punches despite the fact that they might actually be cool with the guy who they're opposing. And a couple of examples of that would be when Muhammad Ali fought Ken Norton. They had a trilogy. Ali and Norton liked each other. I mean, when Ken Norton years later was involved in a terrible road accident and he ended up paralyzed from the waist down, Muhammad Ali was one of the first people to turn up at the hospital. And again, they spoke publicly about the fact they liked each other. They were cool with each other. And you could see that actually at the press conferences for their fights, particularly the third fight, there was loads of banter between Ali and Norton and they were enjoying themselves and they liked the competition but again they appreciated each other's personalities and all that type of stuff and an even better example would be the Evander Holyfield Riddick Bowe trilogy Holyfield and Bowe were friends before they fought each other they were friends during the trilogy and they're still friends now all these decades later and it's an extraordinary thing because their fights were so brutal I remember watching interviews with Holyfield and Bowe in the lead up to their fights. I think the one I'm thinking of in particular was in the run up to their third fight and they were sitting next to each other and you could tell they were friends. <laughs> you know, they were like bantering back and forth with each other. They were very relaxed in each other's presence. And then they're going to go in there in that third fight and have an absolute brutal war where they're trying to take each other's heads off. It's a strange thing, boxing. Anyway, I'm not saying that Joshua Boatsy and Dan Aziz are the same caliber of fighters that I've just mentioned as the same fighters I just mentioned should I say, but the same principle hopefully will apply here. Even if they're friendly and this beef is fake, regardless of the friendship, we still get a great fight between them. And stylistically, you would hope that that would be the case because they're both aggressive. I don't recall ever seeing Joshua Boatsy or Dan Aziz fight an entire 10 or 12 rounds on the back foot. Both of these guys are come forward fighters who like to let their hands go. Now in terms of how I see the fight going, my prediction, it hasn't changed since this uh, fight was originally announced. I'm going with Boatsy. I think he's going to win convincingly. I think he's the far more talented of the two. He's taller. I think he's faster, hits harder, better punch selection, better punch variety. He's just more talented. With that being said, when you've got a guy like Dan Aziz, who's a real blue collar fighter, guys like that who are not as talented as the Boatsis of the world tend to be extremely hard workers. They have to be to compensate for the fact that they're not as talented. So they tend to be extremely determined in great physical condition. You know, their stamina is on point. I remember the Craig Spider Richards fight. When Boatsy let his hands go, he was doing damage. He just didn't let his hands go enough. And there were moments in that fight, particularly in the second half, where he appeared to gas out and he just was very inactive. If Dan Aziz has got a chance to win, it would be to take advantage of those periods of inactivity where Boatsy is just not throwing anything. Make sure you force him to work. That's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. Joshua Boatsy versus Dan Aziz.